Hello, this is Nick from Breaker Press Games, and I want to talk today about uh, DCC RPG and XP or experience points. Uh, before I do, I want to let people know that uh, uh, the Tome of Debasement zine uh, has started shipping. Uh, I shipped out uh, 27 copies uh, today, uh, roughly, or to 27 backers more specifically. Um, but uh, shipping has begun. Um, I'm really excited with how uh, the zine turned out, and hopefully you are too. That being said, um, let's talk about experience points. So one of the things that I find very concerning uh, when I see people talking about DCC on uh, places like uh, um, DCC Rocks on Facebook is this notion that DCC isn't the best game for campaigns, the best RPG for campaigns. And I think that's nonsense. I think it is a wonderful system uh, that is perfect for campaign play. Um, but occasionally, you, while running campaigns, and I've run several now, uh, you pick up on things that, uh, that could use a little bit of a tweak. And so we're going to talk about that today in the form of experience points. Now, there are a lot of people in, uh, with, in modern thought that uh, like to dispense with experience points altogether. Uh, they level people up after every, let's say, two sessions or every time they complete an adventure. Um, because I do a lot of sa uh, sandbox play uh, that is nebulous as far as adventure, uh, I don't feel that that really works for me. But also as a player, um, you know, everybody has different motivators as to why they like to play. Some people like leveling up and getting those abilities. Some people like... Um, getting the treasure and treasure is the big draw the big draw for me has always been experience points it is this measure of how well i'm succeeding and it's very important to me particularly because um i for my brain uh meeting small goals um and a lot of small goals uh is is a measure of is how I measure accomplishment. For example, when I was playing Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer Fantasy, when I painted models, I often painted them piecemeal, and I considered it a success every time I completed an arm or a set of legs or a torso. Uh, that gave me a feeling of accomplishment, particularly because for me, painting moved really slowly. So building all of those pieces in order to get to the completed model, the completed fully painted model, that was my measure of accomplishment. And so XP kind of works in that same way for my brain. It's not the same for everybody. Some people, they want that fast uh, uh, advance to uh, the next level, to the next level, so they can pile on all of their skills. But for me, skills have never been really the big draw for role-playing games. But we'll talk about that further in a minute. Um, one of the things that uh, when I was just going through uh, the DCC rulebook and reading up on XP is that uh, one of my favorite lines in there is survival is its own reward. And that is very much in the mindset of how I look at DCC RPG and the joy that I derive from it. I really like this idea of um, keeping treasure to a minimum keeping advancement semi-slow, um, and at the same time, that every, every session that a character survives is a win. And there are some people that think that, uh, you know, that isn't necessarily good for campaign play. Um, but coming from uh, AD&D, which is really my roots, uh, you know, it was normal, like my favorite progression was from first to fourth level. And the reason being is because I didn't like, my goal wasn't to have super characters and casting wish spells and resurrection spells. None of that appealed to me. My brother, I love him. He was obsessed with the plus five Holy Avenger. Never mattered to me. Hey, I've got a plus one sword. I'm awesome. Um, but, you know, that is kind of how I think about all of my, uh, all of my, Media. I am way more, I've never been interested in a superhero like Superman uh, who can basically do whatever uh, compared to uh, a superhero like the Punisher or Daredevil, which are basically normal Joes. 
um, at least on a, on a certain level. And so those, those types of characters always appealed to me much more. So uh, getting back to DCC and uh, the XP system. So XP and DCC goes from zero to four for each encounter. Zero XP for an encounter where there's no risk, one XP for an encounter that's super easy, two XP for your average encounter, three XP if uh, the party had to expend serious uh, resources or if there was a fatality, and four XP if it was heavy duty. Uh, so it is normal that in a funnel adventure that you are going to have characters that survive that are going to walk away with about 10 XP, which is enough to level up. That's the goal of the funnel, is in one session to level up a character, and that is part of character creation. Um, with getting from f uh, first level to second level, that's from 10 XP to 50 XP. So you have to get 40 XP. And so that is either 10 super deadly encounters or 20 average encounters so it's kind of a slow go so when I was running my second campaign um, I discovered that some of my players particularly the ones that were more measured in how they did things uh, generally tended to advance very slowly and so so on page 358 359 of uh, the DCC rulebook uh, is the section on experience points. And I know that when I originally read the section on experience points, I focused on everything that was on page 359 and didn't turn to page 360. And 360 covers non-combat uh, instances to give out XP. And there are some guidances like a warrior hiring a trainer uh, to train in weapons, a cleric uh, uh, tithing or uh, um, donating to the needy, uh, a wizard forging magic items, etc. Those are all great ways, uh, great reasons to give out XP. Um, but I wanted something that moved things along a little faster, particularly because wizards aren't necessarily going to be creating magic items at first level or feel that feel that they can. Not that I would stop them because I wouldn't. Um, but that being said. Um, so I came up with something that I had stolen from my friend Jeb. And Jeb plays a lot of uh, Powered by the Apocalypse and Forged in the Dark games. And uh, I was curious if this concept was something that Jeb pulled from those games or if it was just something uh, that Jeb found somewhere else. And so I did a search just now, uh, right before the video, on a term called stars and wishes. And so uh, Jeb, at the end of every session, does a debrief. We would be playing Scum and Villainy or we would be playing, a, uh, um, playing um, Neon Black. Um, that's the, the cyberpunk game that we've been playing. Um, and at, at the end of every session, we would do something called stars and wishes. And so what Jeb would do is he'd go or they would go around to each of us and ask us what was a star and what was a wish. And the star portion was uh, what was a highlight of the game? What was a highlight of the session? Something that you really enjoyed. And then a wish was something that you wanted to see happen going forward. And uh, I thought this was a really interesting, interesting thing because it... Um, gave us the opportunity to reflect on the session and discuss it in a way that was kind of lighthearted and fun and gave us a moment to, to you know, really reflect on things. And that built a certain level of, of retaining memories um, because we were then looking back on the last three hours and what, was, what, was, what were the highlights? What were, what were the, the best moments? And so I stole that from Jeb, which Jeb found that on, uh, I'm assuming, on the uh, site, The Gauntlet. That's where, uh, when I did the search, it popped up. Um, but I thought that was kind of a wonderful way of doing things. But as 
since my brain is like, I want XP. XP is the draw for me, me playing, uh, is that survival and that experience, and that's the way that I level up. So, seeing that friends of mine, um, who I was running through uh, DCC uh, in, in campaign play, some of them were advancing really slowly. And so, I took the idea of stars, and at the end of sessions, I started asking everybody, what was your favorite moment that somebody else did? And they would invariably um, pull out the most ridiculous, off-the-wall, exciting moments of play. And so I would give each of, whenever a, uh, a person would name a uh, character that did a specific thing, I would note that down and that character got two experience points. And so we would go around um, all of the players and then I would also give my opinion as well. And this seemed to work really well. Advancement start, you know, XP started to accumulate a bit faster, particularly because like certain uh, certain adventures that I'd run, like um, I don't have it sitting over here, uh, Wide-Eyed Terror, uh, the zine that I wrote, it is technically a two-hour encounter. Uh, and so, how do you give out, uh, you know, um, XP? This is the majority. The majority of the session is two hours, and all of the play is going to amount to two XP, or if the if it goes awry, three or four XP. Um, and so at the end of that session, having a moment where everybody got bonus XP for the crazy things that everybody did, um, that seemed to work out really well. Additionally, uh, you find that you often have in a group folks that are less um, aggressive in their play, they're more more moderate. They they tend to take less risks, and this really encourages that risk taking, because in order to get that bonus XP, you really kind of have to like step out of your shell and do something bold or grand, or in some cases just to have a really great or a really terrible die roll. Um, but ultimately, the idea is is that people will act more boldly because there is this new dynamic where we are now trying to entertain each other. We are trying to be the highlight um, at, in the uh, highlight reel at the, end of the, at the end of the session. So um, this was working out really well. My last group though, they play um, they play more aggressively than my other group. And so I ran into a situation where people really like Darren, um, one of my players in, in my last group, he is the type of guy that goes, you know, I talked about in, in Magic Mystery, he's the, uh, the, the person that, you know, created a created a bong in order to uh, cast uh, choking cloud it was a wonderful moment and of course uh, accidentally killed everybody in the bar um, it was completely unintentional but everybody was like that was the best moment and so everybody kind of piled on and so then uh, dog ended up getting uh, you know a ton of XP at the end of that session another uh, ex example uh, in the last in the last uh, session that we played where we rounded out the season of the campaign because we like to switch out uh, Dungeon Masters. Uh, one of my favorite things is that every time there was a character that Darren was also playing named Dave and Dave uh, had constructed a uh, shield with a spade on it and uh, was very proud of the shield. At one point, uh, a rival gang stole the shield and he reclaimed it. And then after he reclaimed it, every time he would charge into battle, he'd hit a button on his computer and Ace of Spades from Motorhead would start playing in the background uh, as he was describing his actions. This is the type of over the top stuff that I love. It might be annoying in a convention setting, but on, on Zoom uh, while playing with a bunch of uh, friends, it was fantastic. This is the type of stuff I love. But I noticed that 
a lot of the more useful things were being done by my friend Jay, who had a, a cleric named Rhonda um, and a uh, outlier named Jane Hoskins. And Jane Hoskins is doing the tracking and, and uh, because that's one of the things that outliers can do. They're kind of like rangers. They're, they're in the rabid dog scene that I put out. Um, the cleric obviously taking care of healing, doing more subtle negotiations instead of just, you know, trying to, you know, intimidate people into giving information. Um, and these were never like the standout moments that my players would give out XP for because they're more inter were more interested in those ridiculous over the top moments. And so it got me thinking, how could I tweak this even further? And so going forward, one of the things that I'm going to do is instead of just going around and asking people their favorite moment, I'm also going to ask them what the most useful thing another character did. So going around asking everybody, hey, what was your favorite thing that another character did? Hey, what was your, uh, what, what did you think was the most useful thing that another character did? And give out two experience for each of those things, for each um, mention that happens. This way, we don't have this piling on where one character is going to get, um, you know, let's say, 8 XP, or yeah, 8 XP, because all four people all named the same character as this was the highlight moment. So we can spread it around a little bit more. So, yeah, I, I think this is a great way. I did, uh, before uh, recording the video, I went around to a number of my uh, campaign groups to see you know, how did they feel about how I ran XP? And everybody that responded were all very, very positive about this methodology. So um, this isn't to say that, uh, you know, for those those uh, judges and players uh, that do prefer to, you know, just level up every other session or two, um, or at the end of each adventure, they prefer that. I'm not saying that this is, um, you know, superior in some way this is just how i like it um because i like those little rewards and uh i think it's worked out really really well so that's my uh my bit on uh, xp and dcc rpg i hope you all enjoyed it um so that you know uh breaker press games you know we not only uh do kickstarters for a, a bunch of different zines and and uh adventures uh we also have a patreon now and so uh, you can back us at a uh, $3 or $5 level. The, the Patreon is to uh, get bonus content and things that are a uh, work in progress that, uh, that we're working on for the future. Uh, previous things that have gone up on there are a uh, completed adventure uh, called uh, Cleft, Cleft in the Mangled Hills uh, and a bunch of the work in progress content for the second printing of Rabid Dogs and for... Uh, um, the upcoming Standard Car uh, Courier Volume 1. Uh, and uh, at the end of this month, uh, we should be putting up The Path of the Valorous, which is a uh, uh, single player, uh, one DM, one player uh, adventure that uh, um, was a, uh, a training exercise for uh, transitioning a zero level uh, uh, peasant to the cleric that they were meant to be. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, people will enjoy this content. So it's uh, something that you should check out if you enjoy what we are into. Um, that's it for today. And thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for supporting indie games and indie game designers. This is Nick from Breaker Press Games signing off. Bye.